Hey guys, welcome back to the VoIP guys. Um, last time around, we uh, we added a Baronet gateway to the MobileDick system. Okay? Yeah. And we started with the basic configuration. And now what we're going to do is to show you how to finish that off and um, discuss a few bits and pieces. Um, and that's about it. We're just going to show you how simple it really is to um, finish off the settings and off you go. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is go back to the commander. And I mean, this is the gateway we set up last time, yeah? And I believe this is how we left it last time. We needed to edit it, okay? And remember we talked about certain uh, bits and pieces. Like here, we've got all the IP address that we uh, key either manually configure or automatically configure and so on. If we wanted to change the username and password, we could do uh, and so on. But the important part here is under assignment. Um, remember we talked that you could automatically detect the modules. Yeah. Yeah. What we can do here is um, we can see straight away which modules are there uh, under the assignment. And we can also look at, for example, um, how we configure them. You know, we got them here where it's set up as uh, master and slave. Mm -hmm. And this is for timing purposes, just to make sure that everything works properly. Okay. But what we can do now is we can turn around and say, right, under add, we can add the line that we want to use. Okay, so for example, here, I mean, in this current configuration, uh, it makes most sense to use an ISD trunk line. But if, for example, we had a GSM gateway, uh, we could use the GSM one, but it's grayed out because we don't have GSM module. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we just click on here and then just give it a, a nice sounding name. Um, okay. And then here, I mean, for you guys who are aware of technology, you'll know what these ones mean, but we don't really need to do much about our configuration there. Uh, and then here we've got um, our ports that we're using on each module. So, you know, um, one port, two lines. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And what we can do is we can turn around and say, right, we want uh, ports one and two to use the ISDN. Okay. And that's all we really need to do. What's well, also great with the Baronet right there, because what's going to happen then is if one of those ports isn't available, maybe it's being used or something's yeah. happening with that, it'll automatically mm -hmm. look for the available line exactly. yeah. to send it out mm -hmm. on. Yeah, so I mean, you can then make sure that you have continual uh, cooling services and so on yeah. and so on. Yeah, it's a pretty useful little system. And we just click on OK. Um, nope, hang on. I'm not allowed to have a number in there. <laughs> so just click on OK uh, with the underscore. Space. Yeah, the space is the problem. We need a, a little underscore in there. And put the trunk back in there. Get rid of that space. There we go. And click on OK. Okay, and then it's automatically there. Um, that's all set up. And then what we can do here is um, when we click on Save, okay, that part of it is done. But of course, we do need the trunk to be able to talk with. So yep. what we can do is we can go under Gateways and go to Trunks. And then here, we have another setup wizard uh, for Baronet. We click on OK, and here what we can do is um, we set up the configurations we need. So uh, prefix for incoming number, zero, area code. I mean, we're in Deckendorf in Germany, which is 991. Um, and country code, because we're in Germany, is 49, but if in the UK, be 44 or mm -hmm. uh, wherever. And then international, uh, sorry, national area code, and then international zero, zero. And then we could have our originating number. So, you know, I've got that if I wanted to, OK? Uh, number of extensions, uh, digits, and then if we want to be able to set up a switchboard, for example. So the number of extension digits, is that, can you change that in the future, or is that just stuck forever? Um, you can change it in the future, yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then what you do is you just click on Save, and um, it automatically generates some uh, call rules for you and so on. Mm -hmm. But the first thing you need to do here is, obviously, you need to connect it to something. So we set up our gateway. So you connect it to that. Um, and then you can see here, everything else is automatically configured for you. Okay. Um, and then we can go. Yeah. I just saw it on there. Scroll down a little bit. There's the fallback. What is that? Uh, this is if you wanted to fall back onto a certain extension number. So how would you, why would you use that? Um, in whatever scenario, say for example, uh, the extension you're trying to call uh, isn't reachable for whatever reason, you can okay. put it back onto another one. Fantastic. Um, but that's, that's one option. And then we've got the other option for trunk failovers later on. Um, okay. But here we've got here uh, under inbound rules, uh, you can see that automatically set up. So for example, anybody um, who's calling uh, our basic number followed by uh, the zero um, will end up at the extension 100. So if you've got a switchboard, you can put that up like that. Okay. And all other incoming calls um, with the two digit extensions, so the XX, mm. will go straight away through to uh, the extension that they are. 
Okay, so that's that part. And then outbound call rules, uh, you could say here, for example, um, this is standard, this is how it's uh, done with uh, caller ID uh, and so on. But if mm. you wanted to, uh, and you had the GSM gateway here, you could configure the least cost routing for using the GSM. Right, so, so if you had a Vodafone SIM card in there, you could make Vodafone calls yeah, exactly. through the SIM card versus paying per minute with the um, exactly. yeah. PSTN line. So, I mean, that's how you could get that in there and so on. Okay. okay. Um, and then lastly, uh, for the actual setup here, uh, if we wanted to, we could say, right, we could have an extra baronet gateway um, or uh, ISDN line or whatever. So mm -hmm. if for whatever reason uh, this one isn't uh, reachable, you can fail over to the next one. Perfect. Okay. Uh, but obviously, that just, uh, we've shown you how to do it once. We don't need to show you how to do it all, all over again because no. um, it's a fairly straightforward process. Click on save. And then if you Oops. apply everything, what will happen now is it will send the settings to the gateway. The gateway will reset. Yeah. Um, and once it's up and running again, uh, you're pretty much ready to go. The only thing you'd need to do then is to actually add some users to your system, which you can do directly from your directory services, whether it be uh, you know, Active Directory or LDAP or whatever it may be. Um, off you go. You're ready okay. to go. So. I think that's about it, really. That is. Us. So that was how to configure dialing rules with uh, Brunet Gateway. Yeah. Um, next time around, we're going to go into a bit more detail of the actual hardware itself. And then what it actually does when you do that. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Cool. All right, thanks very much for watching. Until next time. Goodbye. Bye.